Okay, a subscriber asked me to do a comparison between the iPhone 6S Plus, and that's the one right over here, and that's the one that's on the screen right now. now that's the new 6S Plus that is, that mine's a 128 gigabyte version, but basically it shoots 4K at 30 frames a second. It's the first iPhone to shoot 4K at 30 frames a second, so that's right over here. In the middle, I've got the RX100 Mark IV, which is about $1,000, and it's a super compact camera. It has a five-minute time limit on 4K video on the first clip. And if you shoot another clip right away, you're probably going to get a minute and a half or whatever. So if you shoot long clips, that's not the camera for you. But 4K, who shoots super long clips? I don't. So that's in the middle here, the RX100 Mark IV. Love that camera. And you notice it's got a wider angle than the last camera, which is the Panasonic FC1000 right over here. Panasonic FC1000 does have a mic input, is a larger camera, of course, than the RX100, does not have the overheating issue. You can go a full 30 minutes on a 4K clip, but it is 30 minutes. It's not forever, so it's not a camcorder. So that's my, my third option, and those can be had for like 800 bucks, I think, now. So... All of these cameras are under $1,000, and all shoot 4K. You be the judge which one would be best for you. The big advantage to the iPhone, now we're back over to the iPhone, is you can shoot the 4K video, edit it, and upload it to YouTube right from that device. You don't even need a computer. So you can shoot your 4K, edit it, shoot it up to YouTube right from that device in 4K. It allows you to upload in 4K, which is really cool. Back to the RX100 in the middle, that's the super compact one. So that's a great travel camera, has a super nice 24 to 70 zoom range, f1.8 to f2.8, so a nice fast piece of glass. So for lower light work, that really comes in handy. And I love the footage that comes out of that camera. Again, back to the FZ1000, Panasonic FZ1000. The advantage here is you've got a super zoom. You've got a range from 37 millimeter all the way out to s almost 600 millimeter. For covering events, it's great. I find the image stabilization works pretty daggone good in it. A lot of my footage is handheld. Go to my event footage. Most of my event footage over the last year has been shot with this camera. And this microphone is plugged right into the camera as well. So it does have a mic input. So I hope this is helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. And any one of these three cameras is a great camera to have for under $1,000. How can you go wrong? And do shoot in 4K. Otherwise, your content is not going to be future-proofed. Everybody's going to have 4K TVs in three, four, five years, whenever. You don't want all your content to be obsolete, to be 1080p. Shoot in 4K. Don't listen to the so-called experts that say you don't have to. Nobody has 4K TVs. Hey, shoot in 4K. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. The Panasonic was a little bit overexposed, not sure why, and also the color saturation was on the Vivid, I think they call it the Vivid setting, on both the Sony and the Panasonic, which is the setting I always leave those on because I like the more saturated colors. Of course, the iPhone, it was straight out of the phone, and I did not saturate it in post, so I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, but I think all, all three kind of speak for themselves. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe.